Hey there everybody and welcome back to McCann Dogs. I'm Ken Steep. We are about to do our lesson one live stream and lesson one is a lot of fun. Um, our grade one students come in. Uh, this session is Monday Wednesday classes so the students will come in without their dogs. And we'll talk about, uh, you know, dog behavior, dog training. We'll also do some like really fun tricks and uh, do sort of like a little uh, dog training entertainment entertainment show. And uh, you know, people will have an opportunity to see some of the amazing things that these dogs can do. And it's fun for our instructors because this is an opportunity for them to show off their dogs and you know really show off what some of uh, some of the hard work that they put in, some of the, what the results of that ha uh, are. So we have fun. Uh, we're just having, having some audio issues, unfortunately. I hope this isn't exploding your speakers at home. And I hope no one's listening on headphones. But, so I'm just gonna zoom by our, uh, some of our instructors and they can introduce their dog. Angela, who do we have here? This is Ethel. She's a 10-year-old Australian Shepherd. And we are the owners of this business. Going on 30 plus years. This is Patty and Gunner. And Nancy, and, so and who do you have with you, Nancy? This is Boo. This is Boo. And, um, and we're Steve. To have you and join us. Sky, look. With him is Sky. Whoa. Coming right into your living room. This is Kale. Put him up. Um, with Hippie Shake. Really about Hippie Shake is very you. Who you guys probably know if you've watched the we channel. Really we have Lori. Lori, who do you have with you? I have Dash. There's Dash. So, 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 on. Oh, dashing towards us. Um, and Ted, who do you have with you? This is Ellie. Ellie really Golden, she's four years old. So Very cool. We, we have a great group of trainers. Carol, who do you have with you today? I've got you Thorpe. Your dog. This is Thorpe. This is a five-year-old classes. Um, Very cool. On Mondays and Wednesdays for this session. Uh, with a and you know, there's actually something really amazing about Carol and Thorpe. <clears throat> Thorpe is actually a two-time world champion uh, of disc dog. So what's really amazing about it is that he, Thorpe is totally deaf. So Carol discovered that and had to figure out how to, um, you know, give Thorpe all the be great information to allow her to train through some of those things. Certainly a challenge, but they have built an amazing relationship and allowed them to win a world championship twice. So we're, uh, we're really ha excited to have her show off some of the dog's skills tonight. So it's kind of cool that we can on. hang back here so and uh, we can just sort of be behind the scenes a little bit. You'll see our instructors are lining up. They're about, Deb's just sort of introducing everybody and they're going to, everybody's going to roll out here very shortly. give you several exercises to go home this week. To so, so that when you Jane, who normally the runs class, this first demonstration, is not here you know, tonight. Have a bit of so, underway already and it's gonna we're going to see how it goes. So, are you responsible for it? Uh, well, <clears throat> yes, I am. <laughs> but I don't really want to say that because it was bad. Demonstration to show you the pressure's on. The pressure is on. Yeah, the, the kill, I can tell Kale's nervous. She doesn't get nervous a lot. I'm sure she'll do fine. I'm sure she'll do fine. But uh, it is, it is, um, you know, these, these grade one, lesson one intakes happen 11 times a year. And uh, it's, it's quite a, it's like a well-oiled machine. You'll see when they get out here, people uh, really know their roles and uh, do a great job of showing off what their dogs are capable of. So I'm going to flip the camera around, we can watch them. Big dogs, little dogs, mixed breed dogs, purebred dogs, they all get to have some fun learning the basics of uh, good manners for the uh, family pet. First off here to my left is Kale McCann and her little toy poodle. This is Hippie Hippie Shake. And uh, she is a wild woman and uh, Kale has lots of fun with her. Next up we have Lori Hughes and her puppy on. Which will be here. This is Dash. And Ted Ridley with a beautiful golden retriever. This is Ellie. Carol Lawrence and a beautiful border collie. This is Thorpe. And I want to just point out that Thorpe is deaf. So just sort of keep an eye on them because Carol will be communicating with the use of body cues and hand, and hand signals. Who we got next? How could I miss this one? <laughs> this is Steve Walsh and the biggest dog we have hanging around here. And this is Skye and she is how old these days? 18 months. 18 months and she is a Irish wolfhound. 
If you're wondering about the pants, well, she's in season right now, so if you have a dog that comes in season, that's all we require is to have some doggy pants on them, and they can still take part in class. Up next, we have Patty um, Young and her bouvier named Gunner. And next up, we have Nancy McKinnis and her whippet named Boo. Okay. And who's down there? Angela McRae and her Australian Shepherd. This is Ethel. So we're going to show you some of the things that you're going to teach your dogs this uh, over the next nine weeks. So this is going to be pretty cool. Now they do sort of like, like a little obedience demo, walking on a loose leash, showing off some of those skills. It's, it's pretty neat to see. To walk nicely beside us. No more pulling or tugging on your arms. Uh, as you walk down the street, we're going to teach them. Look how cute that toy poodle to is. Nice and calm on a completely loose Adorable. Leaf. Now, folks, if you see something you like or whatever, don't hesitate to laugh or clap or make some noise. These dogs love to know there's an audience out there. Okay, this you is Kale's first opportunity. One of the get people organized. You your dog, you're not just to sit when you stop walking. Perhaps you're going to greet a neighbor walking around. So far, so good. So Kale had mentioned that Jane, uh, one of our other instructors, normally organizes this part of the uh, of the show, and Kale's a little bit nervous about how this is going to go. From a sit position, so we do ask our dogs to sit when we stop. It's also good to do before you go into a street, across the street. You want to have your dog sit, and of course we have a fast and a slow pace. So the dogs learn to adjust the pace according to however quickly you are walking. Perhaps you're pushing the baby buggy, so you'll be walking a little slower. Maybe you're out for a dog. I always think this is really cool. But if you're getting a strange dog along the way, no problem. How many people think you could do a little dipsy do with the dogs you meet on the street? Sometimes you end up going to the other side of the street just to avoid uh, any close contact. So we will ask our dogs to work with us and ignore the distractions of the other dogs. Now we also work on stationary exercises, sit stay and down stay. And the dogs are required to stay under distractions, strange people walking by. You know, balls bouncing, fuzzy toys being dragged that maybe remind them of a squirrel. But the dogs do learn to sit and stay or down and stay as told. Now we're just going to do this wheel together. And you just notice how the dogs adjust their pace. Poor Sky there in the middle is not sure whether he should go forward or she should go forward or stop. <laughs> Sure, let's get on the class. So far, so good. <laughs> now we will be walking with a uh, working party with our dogs on leash in grade one. Um, but some of the dogs can work off leash um, once they understand the commands. The command that we use for walking is "Let's go." sort of let's go for a walk, and, and once they really understand that, we can take the leashes off. You'll see some of the dogs are off leash, and you can't really tell much of the difference whether the dog is on or off. They walk beside, and they sit when they stop, when the uh, tell them. Run and have some fun. The dogs don't goof around with each other, but stay focused on their owners. Good job. Very good job. Not so bad. Kel was nervous for nothing. It's going really well. So what we're going to do now is that the dogs have been sort of under control and working. I would like the trainers to just play with their dogs, do some tricks. by the other dogs, they will want to hang out with you. You can see our biggest dog and our littlest dog. Whoa! I think she's... <laughs> but there's a, a few little tricks. <laughs> Lots of fun you can have with your dogs. Okay, guys, gather those wild beasts up again. 
So just because they're not being formally told to do something, the dogs still learn to behave and listen, and they learn to develop a relationship with you where they want to be with you. Why would they want to run away when you're so much fun and there's so many things to do? Now, one of the things that people most often come to school um, to teach their dog, and that is the recall. We think this is very important and we work very hard on this. Um, we want our dogs to come on one command, happy and fast, even though there's distractions. So we're going to call all these dogs at more or less the same time to show you that once a dog understands, they can just come to you, doesn't matter if another dog running past them. So go ahead, you're out in the park or a con conservation area, and um, you know, you've been letting them run around, do their doggy things, whatever, now it's time to come home. So whenever you're ready, bring them home. <laughs> I think they made it. Gunner and uh, and Ellie there sort of had a little, uh, where are you going? I'm trying to get by you. But they made it anyways. That's a job well done, guys. So coming when you're called, that's a very important behavior for um, any Dog. That's pretty cool to watch when the dogs go flying uh, to their handler and there's like six or seven other dogs zooming by. It's really uh, impressive to see the focus that some of the dogs are, are showing during that. Um, I think we might be showing off a few like specific skills next. Lie down, chill out, and they don't have to, you know, be all amped up and, and hyper. Um, so we encourage you to, you know, do things, throw a frisbee, throw a ball. Take them for a big walk. Let them run um, so that they can burn off the energy. And with You're Marty McCann here. Behave, uh, How's it going, Marty? Good, good. But the yeah. Thing is, if you this newspaper is um, freedom, what the Saturday paper coming up. So yes, yeah. I hope the dog Come can pick it up. It's so heavy. It's going you know? into the future. Sure, to get that. Yes, it's great to run around the park, but it's not good enough. Some people say, well, I just let him run until he's tired, you know, and then he comes back on his own. Well, that's not a trained dog. We want to be able to give him freedom and call them back whenever we think it's time to, to end the game. Another thing that you can use to burn off energy and have fun with your dog, and that is retrieving. And we have several dogs out here that are going to retrieve. A lot of your dogs may retrieve naturally. You know, they may think this is a fun thing. But a lot of dogs love to chase, but it's the bringing it back part that is always not done so well. You know, they come back, um, you know, just further away than your arms can reach. Have you ever found okay. that out? Your dog we knows exactly that how long your arms <laughs> are. It. But Here, we are just going to show that we want our dogs to bring that toy or whatever it is they're retrieving right back to us immediately. So this is uh, Ted and Ellie, and uh, she's going to retrieve a newspaper. So this is one of our retriever so Ted demos. Ted's going to send out, Ellie out send to go dog, get uh, the, the paper. Driveway, and uh, Ellie will go out and bring it back. Good girl. Hey, slam, 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 get back. Wait. <laughs> and Good deliver girl. right to Hannah. Ted can even read it most more. <laughs> uh, Kale has traded in her hippie shape. Ellie loves so. doing that. Uh, as a retriever, it well, makes sense that she would enjoy Kale retrieving the paper dogs. so much. This is, uh, Kale has five dogs, and, <laughs> and her uh, better half has two, so. <laughs> Or four and three, I don't, I don't really know. Anyways, this is a six-year-old Border Collie, a wonderful dog, and he's going to demonstrate something that his mother uh, started with. Um, his mother's name is Slice, and she passed away this year at 15. So Kale had her for almost more than half her life. And one of the things she taught her when, when Kale was a teenager, she taught this Border Collie that if my dad ever put any money down anywhere, I'm going to train my dog to whip in there, get the money, and enhance my allowance. So this is get the money trick that her son has now taken over. Except the money. she's going to steal from Ken now, not from her dad. Good boy. He got the present. <laughs> we're so excited. Another, uh, really that is one enthusiastic retrieve. Just how how uh, complicated. Very slow right now. Yeah. Get, 
better than the old ones. I think you guys are going to love this trick. This is a really cool trick. Carol's an engineer, and she has trained Newman to go and get a tool from the uh, screwdriver from the toolbox. Really cool. Check it out. And set them all up and build all the things she needs uh, for these photo shoots. But she has her trusty old dog, so if she forgot a tool in the toolbox. Oh, wait, buddy. Wait, wait. No, no cheating. No cheating. No cheating. <laughs> <laughs> Little stinker. He says, I love doing this. Okay, if Carol needs a screwdriver, well, what do you do? Send your dog to get it. Get the screwdriver. He will open the door, grab the screwdriver, and then bring it on back to Carol. How about that? Pretty good little boy. Okay, Such so a cool I trick. You, we're going to show I love you that some trick. of the basics. It's really, really neat. You will teach your dogs over the next nine weeks. But once you have those basics, there's a lot of fun things you can do with your dog that maybe you heard of, maybe you haven't. Um, but the first so we're going to do a little agility demo now. Now, I know you guys have probably seen, if, I don't and, know whether you um, might be agility competitors. If any agility fans West or agility competitors, leave a uh, thumbs up uh, because I know it's a lot of fun, it is, uh, something that we love to do with our dogs. But in here, we sort of make it a little bit smaller. We um, make a mini agility ring. Um, the flooring's not the greatest for doing like high speed agility, but it's a great opportunity for some of these dogs to go through some of the agility equipment. And uh, the uh, students seem to really enjoy it. There's always lots of clapping. Um, so I think you guys will probably enjoy it too. I think we're almost set up here. In, uh, I have no idea what the course is. I'm going to try to find us the best sight line that I can on the course, but I might have to watch at least one of the uh, the dogs go through it first so that I'm not in the way. A very fun thing um, for you to do once you have your foundation laid. Um, now we have lots of instructors that have done very well at this event from placing uh, uh, provincially and nationally and even internationally. So. We got a great crew of dog agility people. I know my daughter hates this when I say, but she is a 21 world gold medal champion in dog agility. So we're pretty have, uh, proud to have her coaching our agility program. Okay, so this is dog agility. What is it? Well, there's usually a much bigger course than this. But the so dog kind of out of the way. To take a path it's about as good as I can get. Hopefully I'm not in the way at all. They we'll see. I'll let you know shortly if I'm in the way. They rely on verbal commands, hand signals, and body cues so they know which obstacle to go to next. They don't know which way to go until they receive that information from their handler. So we're going to just see a few different dogs go through to show you what this is like. And it's, it's a, a very fun, fun sport for both dog and handler. This is Julie Gillis. And she has a smooth collie. You probably all know the rough collie, the lassie looking dog. Well, this is the same breed minus the coat. So this is a smooth collie as opposed to a rough collie. They're not very, uh, not very common. But please enjoy Julie and Emma. Over the jump, into the tunnel. Over the jump. Okay. And these weed pulls are the hardest thing for the dog to figure out. <coughs> the dog is required to go on the first pull. Oh. Into the other end of the tunnel. That was pretty tough. And those weed pulls are very difficult. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> this is what I was saying. Those weed pulls are very difficult. It's the hardest thing to teach the dog to do. The teeter-totter here is also very nice difficult by Julie because Emma. the tipping action is, is, you know, needs a little bit of confidence from the dogs. And uh, especially the littler dogs are sometimes almost too light to even tip it. So up next we have Carol and our screwdriver retrieving dog, Newman. So into the close end of the tunnel this time and into the weeds. In the first pull, yeah, he made a, I think you know, somebody over there must have saw him, he made a little goof there, hard to tell. Now we've got to get him into the far end of the tunnel, let's see if we can get those weaves right this time. Whoops, oh, Oops. that's it, trying to go a little too fast there, first pull, okay, all the way through. Yay! Okay. Nice. 
nice job at Carolyn Newman. It's pretty cool to know that he can retrieve a screwdriver from a toolbox and run agility. No big deal. How old is he? I always forget. Seven. Um, Patty started training this dog with us when he was just about nine months, six to nine months old. Uh, yeah, about six months old. Anyway, she rescued him, and he came to live with her, and he was a wild and crazy boy. He was so wild, in fact, he jumped up and broke her nose. So she thought, I better get him to obedience school. So off she came, and I'll tell you, for a few uh, sessions, she had her work cut out for her. But eventually, she trained hard, worked hard, and Gunner came around. He came around, and he has done all the levels of obedience. He does uh, fly ball, agility. He does all kinds of things. The only thing is, he can get a little goofy from time to time. So please enjoy Patty and Gunner. Oh, wrong hand, that's okay. We close that big body. That's yeah, wow. On to the cheater totter. Oh. Now back into the tunnel, same tunnel there, buddy. Up oh, there, uh, uh, a big body to get through there. I made it. Good boy. Oh, here's the dog we haven't met yet. Oh. <laughs> she says, I'm keen to get started. If anybody, does anybody know what kind of dog this is? We don't see them too often. What is it? Nope. An old English sheep dog. Remember uh, Don't Eat the Daisies? Those of you that are old like me will remember that <laughs> Disney movie. Old English sheep dog. She's got her little ponytail so she can see. Please enjoy Janice Parks and Ziva. <laughs> Who is ready to go? Oh. That's a big trap down there. Look how fast she's trying to go. Giving those uh, poles a good clean. Now, into the toilet. Oh, girl. Oh, that's it. Try again. Also a great way to clean our weave poles. You know, the weave poles are always super shiny after uh, we have Ziva go through them. It's really nice that way. The other thing is these dogs are used to working on the turf, um, and it's a little bit slippery for them here, so um, it's, uh, it's a little bit difficult. Anyway, enough of agility. We want to show you something uh, else. It's called Rally Obedience. And um, we're going to... I'm not sure how many of you guys might be aware of or, or compete in rally obedience, but it's basically, it's like the old obedience um, uh, used to be in terms of the sport, but it's sort of segmented off in like, uh, Steb's going to explain it, I'll let she's better at explaining it than I will be. Very different skills to do, and what we're going to show you tonight is, is and it, you can compete in rally uh, obedience to compete for titles and, uh, and awards. Um, but it really, what you're going to see is it's just using the skills you learn in grade one and for the advanced classes in grade two and three. Woo. So um, uh, we just thought we'd give you a little taste of it. If something like dog, um, dog agility is not your thing, maybe something like this would be a fun thing to do uh, with your dog. So we're going to uh, just uh, start with rally. It's it's, uh, a, it's always a very fun thing compared to serious obedience. And um, it, it allows people to get in to the uh, training world a, a little bit younger. Okay. So do I have the course? Oh, okay. yes. I have the course. Okay. So we're well, going to go one once one's part way, the second one will go. So you'll see different dogs, some on leash, some off leash. You'll see different signals, some just verbals. Ready? Let's go. And this is a brace. This is what we call a brace. So this is Thorpe and Newman. So they're going to move forward. And the first thing they're going to do is a 270 degree turn. So the, the 360 degree turn, sorry. And then a, a right turn with both dogs, keeping a close eye on Carol. This is a halt and a sit. 
and the down. And then we're going to move forward to a, a right turn. And this is a sit, and the dog remains on a walk around. So 360 degrees, the dog stays out of your way. And we want to do a sit and a down and a forward again. I mean, it's really amazing to think that Thorpe is totally deaf and uh, could perform like that. I mean, it's so cool to see. What a great relationship they've uh, they've built. Away we go out. Two seventy. Do a two seventy turn. This is little Dash, and then run off the course. And this is Diane and Holly. We're going to do a 270, which is not quite all the way around. Whoops, don't say hello to the people. And out we go. So just a, a fun little thing you can do with dogs that is not quite as serious. Um, and this That's pretty is cool. It, it, it's um, low impact, so you can do so it with dogs of any age, and uh, I mean, even at people of any age or any ability so healing, will be able to uh, to compete. It's, it's um, becoming more and more popular. Stop and stand, and then she circles around, and then she also switches sides. So you know, normally our dogs work on one side, then we have them work on the other side. Switch, so the dog just figures out where she wants to be. And we have a moving down. So where we don't stop, we just tell the dog down. Remember this dog is deaf too. So uh, Carol has to really rely hard on his great focus. Um, and moving side, side stepping. This is really interesting because usually go forward. So we want to try to move so that the dog, see the dog cross his feet over and he just moves to the side trying to hold that position. Yeah, he's a good boy. Okay, so now we're going to do a sit uh, with a weight, and then Carol's going to call him, and he should come and sit very nicely in front, and then she sends him around to the start position. She's not going to call him, she's going to sit with him. How about that, folks? Well done. Good job. Well, I have Carol and Clark out here. Carol was away at the... Uh, World Championships of Disc Dog, and um, what was the event you were the champion in? Uh, bullseye. Bullseye. There's all kinds of different events, but this is a new world champion in Bullseye uh, Disc Dog. They don't call it food, they call it Disc Dog. Yeah, and we uh, we are hoping to do a little bit of frisbee here in the uh, upcoming months. We're going to do maybe some clinics or some uh, small little competitions for people to learn a little bit about this. If you have a dog that likes to catch a frisbee, it just might be the thing for you. Okay, that uh, concludes our demonstration. And, um, so that's pretty exciting news, and something I that just, I wanted you to know about is that we're going to be putting on disc dog watching. clinics. Pretty awesome. I think uh, Kale's uh, going, to going to go and start speaking course. to the students. I'm, and, um, um, I need to get we'll busy or get ready for my right. presentation. Right. So uh, right. at this point, I'm going to leave the stream. Uh, thank you guys for watching. If uh, this is your first time on the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We publish new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to help you do something awesome with your dog. On that note, bye for now. Happy training.